In this presentation, we will take a look at multiple choice questions related to a process cost system practicing test taking skills as we go. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. First question, equivalent units of production are the same as A, the number of units that could have been started and completed for the costs incurred during the period, B, the number of finished units, C, the number of units started and completed, D, the number of units started, and E, physical units that were sold. So let's go through this again, see if we can use the process of elimination. So equivalent units units of production are the same as. So we have a definition. What are equivalent units of production? Equivalent units of production are the same as A, the number of units that could have been started and completed for the costs incurred during the period. So that sounds like it could possibly be it. It has a definition there. Notice it's a little bit longer as well. Sometimes when you have the longer type of description and some of the shorter type of descriptions that follow, Sometimes it could be that that might be an answer or it could be uh, something to think about because oftentimes the answer is trying to qualify any types of things that in a case where it would not be true. Whereas if you have an answer that's not true, then you don't need any qualifications to make it further not true. So in other words, an answer that's true may need more qualifications uh, in order to, to rule out any type of possibility where it could be a false answer, whereas a false answer could be pretty short because it's false on its face it doesn't need to rule out any other kind of circumstance but in any case we'll go to b the number of finished units so equivalent units of productions are the same as the number of finished units um yeah maybe i'll keep that one for now c the number of units started and e started and completed so equivalent units are the same as the number of units started and completed yeah, i mean if we don't know it all we might have to keep that one d says the number of units started. So equivalent units are the same as the number of units started. Nah, probably not the one started. Equivalent units of production are the same as physical units that were sold. So the units that we actually sold, uh, probably not equivalent units. So let's go through these again. Equivalent units of production are the same as A, the number of units that could have been started and completed for, for the costs incurred during the period. And notice that's really similar to C, the number of units started and completed for the period. So because those are similar, I'm going to try to narrow it down to A and C. So either equivalent units are A, the number of units that could have been started and completed for the cost incurred during the period, or C, the number of units started and completed, the ones that were actually started and completed. And since they're equivalent, that's going to assume that there's some type of estimate involved here. So that, and there's not really an estimate in C. So I think it's going to be A for that reason. So the answer is going to be A, equivalent units of production are the same as A, the number of units that could have been started and completed for the costs incurred during the period. And remember that equivalent units is that kind of estimating type of number we're going to use in the process cost system. We need to estimate them because we have some units that are not completed. They're not completed units. And so equivalent units are going to help us out to apply costs to the proper process uh, through the use of this kind of estimating tool, which is the equivalent units. Next question, why is it necessary to calculate equivalent units of production? A, uh, continuing units take too long, uh, counting units take too long. B, to estimate actual units to estimate estimated units. C, all of the work to make a unit 100% complete may not have been completed in one time period or E to account for spoilage. So let's go through this again using the process of elimination. Why is it necessary to calculate equivalent units of production? A, uh, continuing uh, counting units takes too long. So it takes too long to count the units, so we're gonna use equivalent units. 
Uh, that doesn't sound quite right to me. I think we would probably want to count the units in in any case. Uh, so equivalent, I don't think it's going to eliminate, you know, the physical count if we need one. B, uh, the estimate actual units to estimated units, to estimate actual units to the estimated units. And we have, could possibly be, if we're going to have equivalent units, we might think, you know, maybe we're trying to make some type of estimate of equivalent units. So I'll keep that one for now. C says, all of the work to make a unit 100% complete may not have been completed in one time period. So, okay, I'll keep that for now. It's possible. That seems true. E says, to account for spoilage. Uh, so to account for spoilage. And so I'm going to keep that for now. And let's go through it again. Why is it necessary to calculate equivalent units of production? So B says to estimate actual units to estimated units. And notice B and E are kind of similar. And then because E says to account for spoilage. So notice that uh, B and E, if we were trying to estimate the actual, the actual units to um, the estimated to the actual, maybe we're doing that possibly to account for spoilage or possibly we're trying to see how we did. Uh, in terms of production, but that's more of a budgeting tool. So actually, it's not it's not B and it's not E because B is it seems more like a budgeting tool here. And what we're trying to do here really is allocate the costs. We're allocating the costs to units that aren't exactly uh, completed or finished. So it's not like we're trying to estimate the units at the beginning and then see what happened at the end and see what the difference is to see how we did and possibly account for spoilage. What we're doing instead is trying to figure out the, the equivalent units in order to allocate the costs to the proper process as we go through. And so C is the correct answer. And note again, C is the long, kind of a longer answer again. And that possibly could be an indication sometimes from, from time to time on a multiple choice question. If you see C has these qualification terms or it's more specific in some ways than the other answers. It might be more specific because, again, it's trying to rule out those instances in which it would not be true so that it can be a true answer, which, again, you don't really need to do that with answers that aren't correct because they're, they're not correct. I don't need to qualify anything to make it more not correct. So just be that could possibly turn up that way where, you know, a more specific answer, more detailed answer, a nuanced answer could possibly be correct in some cases. So final answer. Why is it necessary to calculate equivalent units of production? C, all of the work to make a unit 100% complete may not have been completed in one time period. So that means that we have partially completed units and therefore we can't just count the unit. It's partially completed in terms of inventory. So if we're going to try to allocate costs, we use the tool of equivalent units to help us to do that allocation.